Like people that lived in Iraq wouldn't have known anything about outside Iraq. It was all about Saddam Hussein, how great he was. You know, every day you go on the street, there's a big massive statue of him outside. Every, every 20, 20 yards, there's pictures of him, every people, every household nearly in the country, there's a picture of him. Even he makes jokes on tellies. If there's 25 million Iraqis and if your telly's broke, there should be a stick a picture of me in front of the telly. <laughs> There would have been no rich. If you were poor, everybody was at the same level, and the rich were very rich. They would have been living in the capital, you know. You know, so it was, um, even when we were going to schools, we were only going to school for two hours a day. And then, and then if you didn't do homework, or you'd done your homework, you made a mistake, you were getting a few clatters with a big long stick. <laughs> And then you would have forgot about everything about school and there was days you wouldn't go into school because you're afraid the teacher would bait you up again, you know. Um, my brother used to work for the United Nations and he spoke a couple of four languages, you know, he's a smart enough, intelligent man, you know. So he got a job at the UN and then he started helping out, uh, uh, helping out the Iranian Kurds that had been living in, in Iraq that have no homelands, no hope, you know. So, he's, so the UN used to come in and countries with like Ireland, example, took in a couple of hundred Kurdish people in 2000 and 2002 and that. And, you know, fair play to them for a small country, you know. I we went to St Mary's National School in Carrigan Shannon. So I kind of started off there when I was in the, started off, I think it was fourth class, fourth or fifth. And there's actually a lot of claiming Cliff used to he was the kind of the club coach up there in Leitrim at the time. He used to come in with 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 hurls and helmets and that. Uh, he kind of started off and I didn't didn't know what it was. I thought it was hockey or cricket or whatever it was, you know, he was so and then I just kinda gave me a hurl and a slit. He goes, Oh you do this and practice this and all that. It was hard. It took me a couple of years to to get into the game, you know. I kept at it and then eventually, you know, got used to playing and that. You know, I think when you start playing in the GA, it just you just become you end up becoming part of the community. It's like a it's like a family thing, you know. The GA is great. The lads from Jude's and one from Ballyboden, but the majority of the lads in the school were all Thomas Davis. So, so a lot of they asked me would I because a lot of them would live near me as well. So we're on the same stage. So they were like, oh, do you want to come up and play with us? So I was. Great, so I was only in start of school two weeks and I was straight away they were asking me to come up and join and so it was great. Because I was, I was actually always, I was always down in Leitrim so I always kept friends with all the lads that I went to school with and that and a lot of them had been on the Leitrim hurling team and the Leitrim manager, uh, Martin Kniff, gave me a rang by the time I was 18 at the time so I, yeah, he rang because his son Clement would have been coached me and he was still playing and Martin rang would I like to come up and give it a go and see what what do you think. So that was it when I went up to playing with them last six or seven years or eight years it could be. Me dad because he always wanted to go home because he was a farmer when he was younger and same with the mother so they wanted to go home because they had land over there and they wanted to build a house. The grand, the grand that still lived there and build a house for them to, to go back and to live there so they went back they were living there for about three months and then and then my dad said I'd go home to visit the wanted to come back home to visit us and then on the way on the plane he had a heart attack and he passed away. So that was the end of his dream. Yeah. So so my man said that's it, he'll never go back to Iran again after that. So uh, a lot of the elderly people around uh, there's a lot of uh, like my dad's friend they were been living in Sweden and that for the last twenty years. They have all a lot of them have majority of them have gone back. But it's different for a young fella like me, I call Ireland home because I'm brought up here. I wasn't, you know, I'm part of this culture here, you know, so I'm not kind of, I consider myself Irish. <laughs>